Welcome to episode 26 of the Arctic Crafts podcast. My name is Spente and I'm coming to you from Vesterålen, northern Norway, where I live with my husband and three cats. You can find me on Instagram as Arctic Crafts, on Facebook and Etsy as Arctic Crafts by Bente, and on Ravelry as Arctic Crafts 65. And as you can see, one of the aforementioned cats is lying behind me. So that's uh, that's his uh, that's his spot. And um, today is an overcast day, and we've had lots of snow. And because we've been quarantined, and last weekend, after I did my podcast, we had a blizzard that lasted for about three days. So we have lots of snow. And I can't say I look forward to removing most of the snow. We uh, removed enough snow yesterday to uh, go to the grocery store and the pharmacy. And um, yesterday was the first day we could leave the house. And we did enough uh, grocery shopping to last us about a week. So we're not intending to leave the house again anytime soon. It's kind of, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's it's strange, let's just call it that. And uh, the, the outbreak has uh, affected me as well as a maker and as a yarn dyer Etsy seller because uh, the United States has uh, put down an embargo on everything from Europe and uh, that means no mail to the US. I have uh, two pending orders to the US and both of the customers have been kind enough to wait until I actually get to ship it out. So those of you in the US, if you buy yarn from me these days, You'll have to be patient because I can't send anything to the US for the time being. I think they said it was going to last for about 30 days and so about two weeks left before I can ship stuff to the USA. We're still healthy. I hope you are healthy and staying safe. We are taking our precautions and plan on staying healthy throughout the outbreak. They uh, claim that most of us we are going to get it at some point, but um, I'm in no rush to get it. So that's the that's the bit about the outbreak. Uh, I know lots of people are doing uh, extra podcasts and vlogs and stuff because of the social distancing. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I think what I have done is I have uh, recorded a short, I can't call it, call it a tutorial because it's really short, but I've uh, done a bit of a video where I show you how I do my stranded color work because several people have asked me for that. So that's coming at the end of the episode. and. Um, and as you saw at the beginning, I have a new intro and I'm, I've given the entire podcast a bit of a facelift because uh, my son has uh, written some original music for my podcast and I decided that was a good excuse to uh, give the entire podcast a bit of a facelift. So this is how it's going to look from now on, I think. And... That's enough about the outbreak. Let's try it. It's not here and talk about more uh, uplifting stuff. Uh, we'll talk a bit about what I'm wearing. It's not knitwear, but you'll soon see why I'm wearing an yellow shirt. More about that later. Uh, I have one FO. I finished my 12 i 20, 12 and 20 socks. It's the Lamino socks by Sarah Jordan. 
and the yarn is uh, Martin's Lab in the colorway Carousel. And that's my FO for this time because it's kind of boring to be cooped up in the house all the time. Even though we are introverts and have no problem staying at home and not meeting anybody, it's kind of boring. So I've had a bit of castanitis. I'm sorry to say. So the rest of the stuff I'm going to show you are works in progress and two of them you haven't seen. Let's start with, uh, we'll just take it in the order they're uh, placed. Come to think of it, you actually have seen this, I think, because I remember the bag from uh, my friend Dan Wilson in uh, the US. Um, it's the Desert Diamonds Cowl by the Crazy Sock Lady. And it's in my colorways Brickyard and Peony in uh, my Fine Merino DK. And this is the project I used to show you how I do my color work because there's a nice contrast between the colors and not a, and short intervals between the colors. So it was perfect to show you how I do my stranded color work. This was getting some love, but I cast on something new. So as I was saying, castanitis. Uh, but I'll wait until last showing you my newest cast on. Uh, this is my um, crochet project. And uh, as you see, I've done a bit more work on that. It looks really complicated, but it's not that difficult. If you have, if you're a new crocheter, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make this because there's a bit of, there's a few tricky stitches, but you can see now, you can see the color changes have started. It's uh, lighter pink at the bottom. And um, this is going to take me some time because um, I'm in no rush to get it done and it's cotton. So there's still some time left before summer season and I'm planning to have that done sometime this summer. Uh, I'm going to uh, shoot through these uh, projects a bit because I have, I forgot to tell you what, what kind of yarn I used for this one, suddenly remembered. It's the Cotton Kings Color Bomb and it's 50% um, cotton, 50% acrylic. And this colorway is only a number, it's the colorway 502, but I think I checked and it's called Fairy Tale Rainbow. I think that was it. Um, uh, as I was saying, I'm going to go through the rest of the rest of the the whips quickly because I want to talk a bit more about the last one, and I have something important and exciting to talk about. Afterwards, you'll see what I mean. It has something to do with the sweater I'm wearing. Um, and this is my Birds of a Feather by Andrea Maury. This has gotten quite a bit of love since I showed it to you last. It's starting to get long and unwieldy, but I think it's going to be really pretty when it's done. This is the right side. Yes, this is the right side. I have um, the yarn is uh, is uh, life in the long grass and Nora George. Uh, this is Nora George in the colorway Grateful. This is uh, life in the long grass noon. And this is life in the long grass. And if you remember, I only shown you the um, the yarn band because I didn't want to pronounce it but I've checked it's pronounced Lunasa and uh, and it's a Gaelic festival taking place on August 1st every year look at me doing research being a professional 
aren't you uh, impressed? I know I am. Uh, and I'm going to put um, down below how it's written and everything. So uh, I always do when I show you stuff. Um, and now we're getting to the to the latest whip. I cast this on yesterday. And it's in a Ravenclaw bag that I bought at a gamer's shop in Tromsø while we visited my oldest son. And I'm a Ravenclaw. Yes, I'm one of those people. I actually checked. I went to Pottermore, did the survey, and I'm a Ravenclaw. And this is um, a sweater I've been wanting to do for quite some time. It was in... Uh, DK and I didn't want another DK sweater, but th this sweater was so beautiful. It's the Pinewood by Andrea Jettman and uh, DK sweaters, I'm not, I, I probably won't be wearing it because uh, it's too, uh, those sweaters are too warm for me. But then I realized I could knit it in my Poldale sport because that's it's uh, the, the, the it's uh, I think it's woolen spun and it's kind of fluffy, so I can get away with knitting this sweater in a sport weight, and it won't be as heavy and it won't be as warm. And if you think these colors look a bit familiar, if you've seen, uh, if you uh, are a returning viewer to the podcast, you've probably seen the Jessamy shawl that I knit in my own yarn for Melinda Miser of Rye Flower Knits. Well, I love that shawl so much that I decided I'm knitting a sweater in the same colors. Uh, this color is not showing up too well on camera. What if I put a skein closer to the camera? Uh, it won't focus, of course. So that didn't help. I'll put in a picture of the jessamy shawl so you can see what the colors actually look like in real life. As you can see, I'm using a guacamole and uh, the other colorway is a rock garden, just as in the jessamy shawl. And I'm going for the same subtle contrast as uh, the designer had in the, the sample sweater she knits because I love that subtle contrast. And this is sport weight, and I think this is going to, my, uh, my gauge is uh, a bit looser, but the, the pattern, it doesn't go, I have to, I'm knitting the largest size, and I won't mind if the sweater is a bit looser than the largest size. That's the only thing, uh, negative thing I have to say about the pattern is that it's not really size inclusive but then again it's a free pattern so i guess you can't you can't uh, demand uh, the designer using uh, a lot of time and effort grading a pattern to a lot of different sizes if they're uh, going to publish it for free and uh, so that's the so I guess that's the reason why it's not that size inclusive, because it's a free pattern. Sorry about that. I just had to have some coffee. Uh, put it on that side. And now it's snowing again. So uh, we're not uh, leaving the house, as I was saying, anytime soon. So it can j keep snowing. Uh, if this uh, was supposed to be rain, according to the weather forecast, but it's coming down as snow. Really nice. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about the exciting bit and let you know why I'm wearing this uh, t-shirt. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, uh, ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, one of my favorite bands. And they had their, uh, they were, were they still they're still on um, tour I think, they're touring. Uh, Jeff Lynne I think is one of the few original members, but then again, 
it's his band, it's his music. So that's why it says Jeff Lynn's ELO. And um, we went, uh, we've seen them live uh, two years ago, I think, approximately. And but even though they're still uh, going strong, they had their heyday in the 80s. And there we are getting to the point. Uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough to be included in a make-along. Uh, the other two uh, podcasters in the make-along uh, are Cheverell uh, from Cheverell Stuff and Beth from Shadows and Pearls. And uh, the make-along is called 80s Kids. I'm just checking checking my show notes so I don't for, so I don't forget anything. And um, I of course loved the idea because I'm really a, a, an 80s kid. I um, graduated high school in 1984, and so you see, I'm really an 80s kid. And just to uh, illustrate that. I'm going to put in a picture of what I looked like in the 80s. As you can see, it's the total package, shoulder pads, big hair, and everything that goes with it. Uh, and I'm also including pictures of, uh, I'm going to put in pictures of a few typical sweaters that we knitted at the time. Uh, one of those sweaters I actually knit in the exact same colors and that's this one and um, feels a bit strange saying all these things when I can't see the pictures but I know I'm going to put them there when I'm editing so uh, those were the things I knitted in the 80s and this make along is of course not only for 80s kids it's for all of you and it's a make along so it's really inclusive any craft is uh, is allowed, uh, and the rules are kind of loose because we're kind of laid back. And uh, anything that has to do with the eighties, uh, movie references, music references, uh, typical garments from the eighties, if you want to knit. Uh, big oversized fluffy sweater in bright colors, uh, leg warmers, uh, stuff like that that was typical for the 80s. The um, thing is, also, it's colorway names if they have something to do with the 80s. Neon colors is kind of 80s, typical 80s. So uh, as I was saying, if you can convince me that it has something to do with the 80s, feel free. Whips are allowed as long as they're not more than about 25% uh, done and um, the make along, but you have lots of time because the make along starts April 1st and goes all the way until July 1st. So no reason really to uh, use a whip. Unless you started the blanket in neon colors or something, because uh, that would be eligible because of the colors. Uh, but again, you have plenty of time to finish a sweater in that time. I'm making a chatter thread for the make along today, and I'll put in an FO thread when we get a bit out in April. Um, uh, what? Uh, I'm the only one doing a uh, Ravelry drawing for this. Uh, Chevrel is uh, only doing Instagram. The hashtag, by the way, is, uh, I'm putting it down here. It's uh, 80s kids mal, one word. And uh, Shadows and Pearls, she's also doing YouTube. I'm not sure how she's doing that, but she's also doing Instagram. So I'm only doing Ravelry. I'll do a prize drawing in my Ravelry group. And I've already, uh, I have the prize 
ready because I was dyeing a bit of yarn this week. Not a lot because I have loads in my shop and uh, business is kind of quiet lately. But I needed some bright colors. And then I talk, I was talking with uh, Cheverell about the make-along and it dawned on me. I have the perfect colorway and it hasn't gotten a name yet. So this is the price for the make-along. Because it's sparkly and it's bright colors and this colorway hasn't gotten the name 80s kids and I dyed it up in three different places I have uh, my platinum sock uh, my gold sport and uh, sparkly silver sparkly this gain is not going into the shop however this is going into a safe place and is staying there until the July 1st when I'm drawing the winner. I'll, I'll uh, add some uh, some uh, bright colored uh, progress keepers and a bit of extras that are also 80s related to the price packet. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, draw uh, uh, another price uh, a pattern price but we'll talk more about that later we have plenty of time to uh, talk about uh, prices and stuff like that it's not until July 1st uh, while I'm talking about what I've been dying I can show you the other yarn I dyed this week and this yarn is also 80s related so actually if you have some of this colorway you can use that because this colorway is called Purple Rain. This is also sparkly. Difficult to see because of the dark color of the yarn, but it's sparkly. And this colorway is also going into the shop on Gold Sport, Platinum Sock and Silver Sparkle. And as I was saying, this is called Purple Rain and that movie came out in the 80s. So that's also a, an 80s colorway. I think I have more colorways that can be used for an 80 smile, but you'll have to see. And you can, uh, and I think if you use my yarn in this uh, make along, you can uh, enter twice. You can enter the project twice if you use some of my yarn for your project. And then you can actually double dip because I also have the Arctic Crafts. Uh, knits along in my uh, Ravelry group where you can uh, put in any projects you make with my yarn and that's in my uh, Ravelry group uh, you can find it or if you search the group tab on uh, Ravelry and write just Arctic Crafts podcast you'll get it and I uh, recommend you checking out uh, the other podcasters Cheverell and uh, Beth I'll link both uh, those uh, podcasts in the description box below so you can uh, check out them as well. And I think that's what I wanted to say about this, uh, this uh, uh, knit along or sorry, make along. You can uh, stitch, you can sew, sew, you can crochet, knit, weave. Uh, the sky's the limit really if it's 80s related you can put it in there and uh, as I was saying a chatter thread is going to be put in uh, sometime this weekend the chatter thread is going to uh, be put in my Ravelry group and I'm not sure I'm going to do a lot of dyeing while we're uh, I might get bored out of my skull and do some dyeing but I have, as I was saying, I have loads of inventory in my shop. So if I'm dying this week, this coming week, it's going to be because I want to, not because I have to. And I think that's it. I just have one more thing to show you. Uh, you remember last time I was telling you when we get, got back from Brighton and I was showing you the yarn I bought in Brighton and I was showing you 
two skeins of life in the long grass, hinterland in the Colorway River rock, and that I was regretting only buying two. Well, the third one has arrived. I ordered a third skein from Jack in Brighton, and now it has has arrived. So, obviously, the mail is still running, at least uh, in Europe. I and Canada, I can mail to. I think the US is the only place I can't send anything to at the moment because the Norwegian Postal Service won't uh, won't take on any mail to the US because they know they can't send it on. So that's kind of logical. I understand why. So I'm uh, I'm checking their. Uh, the postal service i'm checking their website every day and i'll be sure to let you know when uh, when i i'm allowed to send mail to the us again and one more thing i did in my shop i put out an instagram uh, post about it yesterday but i'm going to mention it here as well uh, my etsy shop i've been using norwegian krona as my currency it doesn't affect you that much what currency I use or it hasn't done so far because Etsy is converting. So you always get the prices in your currency, no matter what the currency is. And because the Norwegian krona has dropped really fast because of the outbreak and it's been a bit unstable for the last few months, I decided I wanted to change my shop currency from Norwegian krona to euros because euros euro is a much more stable currency than Norwegian krona. The thing is, uh, when I converted my prices from Norwegian krona to euros, that of course affected the currency conversion to your currency because the euro is uh, more stable and more, what should we call it, uh, it's more valuable, sort of, I don't know the words, English is my second language, as I keep telling you, and that makes it look like, for some of you, that I've hiked my prices, that I've put, that I've, um, my yarn is more expensive than it used to be, for me, it's not, I've only changed the currency from Norwegian krona, to euros. So depending on the conversion rates, it might look like my yarn is more expensive. I've, I did a bit of research before I changed my prices. I first I checked the conversion from Norwegian krona to US dollars and Canadian dollars and pounds. And then I did the same after I changed it to euros. And yes, the prices went up in those currencies. But I have to look at the bottom line. I can't take a loss because of the unstable currency. So I'm going to keep my prices in Euro for the foreseeable future. That's what I wanted to say about my shop. And I've shown you the yarn and uh, that's it, I think. Now I'll just put in the tutorial video how I do my stranded color work and my husband was my camera he was holding my camera because I couldn't figure out how to uh, mount the camera while I was showing you this so my husband was a sporty and he was my camera support what you tripod he was my tripod um, and he's here by the way He's uh, in his chair with his headphones on and probably looking forward to me being finished with this so he can come back. Uh, so uh, that's it for this time. Uh, if I do, uh, I might do some uh, filming if I get really bored and I'll just include that in next week's episode. And I have nothing more on my show notes, so hopefully... I haven't forgotten anything. So until I see you next Friday, stay safe, stay healthy and 
I'll see you. Bye. Several of you have been asking how I do my color work. So here goes. As you can see, I have both strands for the color work on my left hand, on my index finger. And what I do is I pick from the color I'm going to use and I just go over and pick the other color. And the dominant color is the one closest to me, but it doesn't matter so much. But what you have to be pay attention to is that you never change places. You have to have the same color closest to you at all times. And to make sure that my tension is even, I have this little trick. If you see on the wrong side, I hold my finger between my knitting and the color I'm using. So I don't have any puckering afterwards. And then I do this as I go. And that is how I knit stranded color work. Mm -hmm.